I think it's doing that thing. How come we always end up doing it the same way each time? I don't know. Look, it must be on. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, yes, there, there it's you on. Are. Yeah, yeah, right. Are. All right, sorry. Always, we never seem to get this part right. Okay, two, one, two things in this one. The first one is an article we've just completed. And um, we haven't done one of these for a while. It's actually a rock article, and it's a combination of some rocks that I've one I was given, um, two, one was given a while ago, but we didn't know what to do with it, and another one I found by mistake and didn't know it was there, and it's been there for years. <coughs> Alongside um, two other people, along with Michael Bradica, who gave us a rock that comes from near Terry High in Moree, um, two other people have one brought the rock to us and shown us uh, photos and another lady has sent us a lot of information and showed us copious photos and they're all interesting rocks for one reason every one of them has technology that just does not fit stick stone bone and campfire technology that's a commonality and we haven't done this for a while so it was quite a a bit of a pleasure and a bit of a change of pace uh, to do something that we've done a lot of and it's always difficult to write about rocks but this one was interesting because apart from the other rocks and we've explained in varying amounts of detail what's involved with them one of the rocks we wrote about is actually this one here now it's quite an unusual piece of work number one because normally when we get rocks given to us this one was given to us through the post we get phone calls or emails. This one had neither. It had nothing. In fact, I'm pretty damn sure, and I'm, I'm not 100%, but 99% sure what was really interesting when I picked it up, picked up the parcel post, was I didn't see a return address, and I didn't take much notice of it, and then got the rock out, and then realised when I opened up inside there was nothing. Normally I get a letter Rarely about where the place has come, the rock has come from, but mainly about how it's used or stories with the rock or information anecdotal about maybe something unusual, some magical has taken place. But I normally get something. From this one, I had nothing. And I decided I'd write about it because we we're picking up other rocks. And what's interesting is, ladies and gentlemen, this rock, when you measure it, and you'll find two things with it, even though it's slightly irregular in its shape. If you go from this point to that point and put a string, the string right passes directly through the center of this circle. And certainly when the rock was sent to us, it wasn't packed. There was no letter inside it, no packing. And I spent two super glues sticking it back together. From this side, it looks pretty deadly. From the other side, you might get a different view of what's happened to it. We had to stick it back together to make it work. And you'll notice that circle goes through and then narrows in the center and comes through on the other side. Now, what's interesting, ladies and gentlemen, is the measurements. It turns out from the shorter side to there, to that point there is 12. That's 4.8. And the last part's 14.4. And you might think, so what? Well, it turns out if you break them up in multiples of 2.4, 4.8 is 2, 12 is 5, and 14.4 is 6. So it goes 6 to 5 as a perfect ratio. And the string runs through the center. And what is interesting, what I did do with this one, because we're dancing in the dark with it, is we've got two resident um, psychics, I think the best two in this country, but anyway, that's my opinion, and they've got an impeccable track record. And I asked Soul Reader to tell me what she felt, and then we used the crystal to confirm it. In the center of this rock, the energy seems to come out of the center in a coil, in a spiral, and spirals around. She could feel it, the crystal was tracing around at the same time, the crystal and the chain we use. And we think it's some sort of energy device. Past that, we're not sure. But, ladies and gentlemen, what you're going to find about each of these rocks we write about is when people try to compare them and find a place that they come from or a like for like, it's never. 
it's never the same. We've got hundreds of these rocks which are all going back onto country, as everyone knows, and half of them already are there now. So that is in progress. But in each of these rocks, there's nothing like them. They are all one-offs because they come from a time way back when technology was, was more. There was more technology. They gave it up to become more spiritual. The reasons for walking away from technology are sound and proper. But there was a time when there was more than a campfire, when there were blades, probably laser, sound, other things going on, and the rocks we've got. Now, if you look just at the formation of this rock, there is not one percussion bulb anywhere on it. How was it made and how did they make that circle piece in there? Why was it made? What's it used for? Throwing it at someone in a wall, then they throw it back to me? You wouldn't want to throw it too hard because it's laid and it's fallen apart. So it's not, it's not, in fact, if you had looked at this without the break and got it before it was sent, you would swear it had never been used. So what is it? And the beauty of this is with all these things, the answer is we don't know. But there is a commonality in all this and it goes back to what we do on our websites and what's on our next online conference is we're dealing with rocks. And in our next online conference, what we're doing is we're completing our investigation into Uluru and the ceremony that took place. And in the, in the presentation before, Chapter 8, we had three original elders speaking about the star people, the conference and what happened and all those sort of things and giving their take on things. What we're now doing is, and we had two women also, two psychics, Soul Reader and Leah. And they were talking about what happened on that day, how it affected them. Well, today we're doing this differently. Next time we're doing it differently. We chose three people who were actually at the conference on the 21st at Uluru, which was on coincidentally the same time the reason why Uluru was shut down for two days on the 21st and 22nd to do their ceremony at the Rock. Now... I wanted, I felt it was only right to draw through three people from the conference because they stood by us and they helped this whole thing happen at the time. But again, it was coincidental. They booked this place years before and some people say they did cultural appropriation on the ceremony. Impossible. It was booked 18 months before, 12 months before and they knew nothing of what was happening alongside. But I, we've chosen three people, Nick, Craig... And they were both there. They did ceremony with us in the football field next to the toilets, aiming at the goalpost. The rear was about 20 k's away. And then the third guest is from those that was banished, that couldn't come to Uluru because of COVID. I'm not going to make a commentary about that. Enough said about that by everybody. We don't do that stuff here. And we chose... Freddie, Freddie Silver, because when I heard what he had to say, I just think every word I heard, I thought that's exactly what we're talking about. But he does it differently. He's got a very engaging style and he talks about it from an overseas perspective. And since we're going to be talking about archaeology in Australia that complements this, what's taking place at Uluru, and obviously that's linked around all the different proof we have of the site, we're going to cover that again. We do that each time. Then we're going to be looking at some artefacts, in particular some new information that's come up with the rings and looking at the rings from a different point of view, from a non-scientific, utterly esoteric point of view, to work out why they're here and what they're capable of, which we haven't done before. But Freddie will be talking about the, the overseas historical picture that goes way back and the real truths that we're also looking at. And the reason why I felt there was a real link here is because part, a major part of our talk was going to be linked around the rings. And these rings originally came from the same part of the world that Freddie's talking about. So I wanted to do that connection both in Australia and overseas. And that's why we brought the Freddie in. And he also fits in because he was part of the people who were at that conference but weren't allowed to come. But he still gave his presentation and unfortunately Freddie didn't get involved in um, what happened that night. 
with the um, ceremony we did because he couldn't. It's as simple as that. That's no one's fault. It certainly is someone's fault. It's all to do with COVID and stuff like that. But for now, ladies and gentlemen, we've got a link there to our online conference and to the new article I've put up. I tried to keep it short, failed miserably. But I did, when I brought in the other people's rocks, I did make that quite short. I gave one lady, Amanda, a chance to write a couple of paragraphs, which she did. And for the other one, for Vinkers, what we basically did was I just gave one sentence because the rock was so amazing. You only needed one sentence to see what's so wrong. It's just so not our technology. So ladies and gentlemen, enjoy the article. I've got another one coming up about some amazing discoveries about carry-on glyphs. What we think is absolute proof that they're legitimate and I'm working on that right now and that'll be out soon. And I might breach that at our next um, online conference too because we've stumbled on some evidence that proves conclusively that these glyphs are legitimate. But anyway, we'll see how that goes. But for now, ladies and gentlemen, I promised Evan i keep this under 10 minutes and that was my brief and I'm hoping I did. So until next time, Join us on our article and also this weekend on the Sunday, come along and join us on our online conference. It will be different. And those people who've seen them before know that you don't get disappointed and you don't get repetition. And this certainly isn't that. Until next time.